SpaceX's epic rocket catch changes everything. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of stormy weather. Still trying to get rid of some of this gunk. It's been taking forever, guys. So long, so long. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology, a spacey day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX. Wow, absolutely wow. Yesterday, I did a live for the integrated flight test or the IFT. It was about six or 700 of you guys hanging out with me during the entire time, about three hours. It was an early morning, but it was awesome. It was worth every bit of no sleep. <laughs> so I wanna go through a little bit of this with you because this is once again, something that is just simply epic something that the entire world was watching. It was a nail biter is what it was. It was something that has never been done before. It was like when we got to the moon. So for me, this is the beginning of a next stage of space travel. And I'll get into that before the end of this video. So before we get into this article and a little bit of my commentary, I just wanna say that if you enjoy the video, throw it a thumbs up, that's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you, I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here so I go live and when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a little thank you button. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video's free anyways. But I would really appreciate you becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. They are free just for you being here. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. And a lot of you are here for SpaceX or SpaceX Starlink. I've put together 340, 350 videos just for you. I'll put a little link over here. Don't click on it yet. This link will take you over to my playlist with all of those helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, how to do everything, and more importantly, the why behind all of SpaceX Starlink. So check that out when you're done watching this video. So let's jump right into this article. And like I said, I'll give you my commentary, but more importantly, down below, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about all of this? And if you're shy and you don't wanna put something down there, I understand, that's fine. Put an emoji down there, any type of emoji, a satellite, a rocket, maybe a poop emoji. <laughs> it doesn't matter, put something down there so I know that you actually watch the video. Anyways, it starts out by saying, this morning, SpaceX did the unthinkable. Flight directors go for launch. T-minus five, four, three, two, one. We have left off. In the most ambitious test yet, Starship soared into the sky with its fifth test flight, officially known as Integrated Test Flight 5, or IFT-5, and this one was a game changer. At just before 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the mighty Starship roared off the launch pad at SpaceX's Starbase in Texas. But this wasn't just another test. This was something we've never seen before, something that could change space travel forever. Today, for the first time in history, SpaceX aimed to catch the super heavy booster using the colossal Mechazilla launch tower. That's right, a rocket catch. Using giant chopstick arms attached to the tower, SpaceX set out to prove it could catch and reuse the massive first stage booster, paving the way for a new era in rapid rocket reusability. And they nailed it. The booster detached from Starship descended back to Earth and was caught by the Mechazilla arms in a flawless maneuver, one of the most incredible feats ever accomplished in history of space exploration. Oh, we can see it coming down through the plume. Booster coming in hot for booster catch. Can I ignite 13 of those Raptor engines and this view is incredible right now. You can see how fast this vehicle is moving on the left hand. Sure. Landing burn. 13 ignited. Ignited. We're now down to three Raptor engines. We can see those chopsticks now. Mechadilla has 
Meanwhile, Starship itself continued its journey, aiming for a splashdown in the Indian Ocean after a half orbit around Earth. Just over an hour after launch at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, it made a precise touchdown right on target. Landing bird start up. But this is just the beginning. SpaceX isn't just breaking records, they are reaching for the stars, literally. Their vision? Making humanity a multi-planetary species. With Starship, they plan to take the first unmanned flights to Mars within the next two years, testing the reliability of landing on the Red Planet. And if all goes well, the first crewed missions could happen as soon as 2028. Elon Musk was quoted in saying, the first starships to Mars will launch in two years during the next Earth to Mars transfer window. These missions will be uncrewed, but if they succeed, we are aiming for the first human trips to Mars in four years. Today's incredible catch of the Super Heavy booster is a giant leap forward, proving that SpaceX isn't just redefining space travel, they are revolutionizing it absolutely the case. We have just witnessed history and the future. This is absolutely 100% the case. Now, when I watched this, I know any one of you guys out there watching it would have just been awe-inspired by it. Seeing that super heavy coming through the atmosphere, breaking the sound barrier, and then finally landing perfectly softly, that is the key here. Literally just so soft in those Mechazilla arms, was just, it's awe-inspiring. I don't I mean, how do you even do that? The mathematics in that, the three-dimensionality to it, right? The amount of thrust, air, velocity, the just everything going into it. Nothing is static, right? This is a moving thing. You're working in a three-dimensional plane. While Mechazilla is not moving, the rocket is at thousands of miles per hour. And then at the very end, being able to make that soft, really soft landing is just, it's really unbelievable. Unbelievable. I would akin this to when we landed on the moon. It was just that awe-inspiring to me because this proves that we are moving forward in space travel. And everything that Elon Musk has been saying that people have been crapping on for years, yeah, this guy's gonna get to Mars, sure he will. We're never gonna get to Mars. We won't even get to the moon again, blah, blah, blah. It's not the case. This is actually happening. And when he says two years, they're gonna attempt to get a starship to Mars, it's going to happen. Now, the second important factor here was that they wanted to make sure that that new heat shielding that they installed functioned, worked. Because we know on IFT4, there was a problem, whereas one of the flaps basically melted. The internal skeletal structure still worked. The mechanism still worked, but the skin just melted off it with the plasma pouring off this thing at 20, 2,600 degrees or something Fahrenheit. So it is extremely, extremely hot. So they worked on this new heat shielding system. Now they still have the ceramic tiles. It's like 18,000 ceramic tiles in totality. But underneath that, they have this ablative layer. Now this acts as a secondary or a let's say a backup to the main layer, which are those ceramic tiles. Now this layer's job is basically to be destroyed, okay? It's supposed to be charred. It's supposed to break down. And as it breaks down, it causes a dissipation of heat. So it's very interesting on what they're doing here. Because remember, if one of those tiles pop off, you know, you're gonna end up melting through that stainless steel structure. 
That's a problem. That's the same problem that they had with the space shuttle with those tiles. Those tiles would pop off and now all of a sudden you have an issue of possible burn through. Once again, this burn through only happens through re-entry when we see plasma pouring off the thing at once again 2600 degrees plus Fahrenheit. So I looked up this layer. I'm like, what the heck is this? What is it? And it stated that it was a phenolic impregnated carbon of some kind. Basically what that means is it's like carbon fiber or something thereabouts. Now obviously the compound, I don't know what it is, but let's just call it a carbon fiber. And as it chars underneath the ceramic, it dissipates heat. So once again, it is a protective layer, a secondary, a fallback layer, so we don't end up seeing the craft burn through and blowing up. So they wanted to test this out to see how it worked, and it worked really well. Number one, the tiles, we didn't see many flying off like the last time. They were on there pretty damn well. Now, if you don't know, these tiles are actually put into place, the 18,000 tiles. They're put into place with not only pins, a mechanical means of putting them into place, but also a, let's say, a very strong glue. <laughs> <laughs> this is a heat resistant glue that they use to actually adhere them. So this is really, really important and it worked really well. Now, did it work for the entire structure? No, it didn't. Now, the problem that I see was with the flaps. It is at maximum entry dynamic pressure, remains on a good trajectory. All right, so that is great news there. Um, like Dan said earlier, this is basically Max Q part two. Now, there was one flap that we saw that there was a lot of melt through or meltdown happening where you can see the skin of the flap actually melting. The second flap, there was three in total that they showed. The second flap, we can see a little bit of some hot spots building up. Now, it did not melt as the first one did. All in all, I think it went well, all right? Number one, we saw Mechazilla catch the Super Heavy, which is just, I mean, without words, absolutely just awe-inspiring how that's even possible. But then also what was very important is we saw that the Starship landed exactly where they wanted it to land, unlike the last time where it was like a mile off. It landed exactly where it was supposed to land. The reason why we know that because the buoys were able to take the video of the Starship landing. Now the Starship did blow up once it did land in the water, but that's okay because it doesn't matter. It wasn't something that would ever be reused anyway. So it blowing up once it did make a soft landing in the ocean was not a bad thing. And finally was that new heat shielding system, which also worked very well. Obviously, they need to move this heat shielding to the other side of those flaps because we can see one side of the flaps has the shielding on it, whereas the other doesn't. So that means that it is actually burning through either because the backside, the let's say the tiles were coming off, we couldn't see that, or the plasma was melting it from the other side. I personally think in the next IFT6 that we see, SpaceX is going to wrap the entire flap so the whole flap will not only have the ablative covering which is that secondary covering but it'll also have those ceramic tiles on top it just simply makes sense to do it that way but we will see anyways guys what do you think about this i think this was something that was like i said before akin to us landing on the moon it was that big it just proves that we can do things that just years ago would be thought as absolutely 100% impossible. And here we see them happening. Amazing. The world was watching the US as this was transpiring, and I'm sure they were all in shock as we were here. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, down below, I wanna hear from you. I wanna know what you think about all of this. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools and the products that I've made and my merch and my tees and my shirts and my books and everything else. Check it out. If there's something that you like at jchristina.com, pick it up, help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.